Right. So good evening, everybody, once again. I've said good evening a couple of times, so it's my pleasure to welcome you for this session. So we are having a three-day session. It's going to be form of master classes. So we're going to be sharing different stuffs in the area of business analysis and data analysis as well. So tonight, the direction is going to be in data analysis that's where i'll be focusing and then i'm the one hosting tonight and this is dr yakubo balogun here welcoming you for this session and i'm very sure you're gonna have a very good time like i don't have a doubt about that i think you're gonna find value for the time you're spending in tonight's session so i'm gonna tell you a little bit about a couple of things and how the session is gonna go tonight and then what has informed the direction of my presentation tonight. I'm gonna to try to share my screen as I tell you the story that's obviously informing the direction of tonight's conversation. So tonight, this is what I'll be discussing on Google Analytics. I'm, I'll be focusing on web analytics tonight. And I'm gonna tell you exactly what has informed that and why we're going in that direction very quickly. So, I was looking at jobs, for example. Yeah. Now, I was looking at jobs. People need jobs, okay? And then it's our job to support people that need jobs for them to be able to get the job that they need. So that is what we do here at Intel in Navis Korea. So as a way of just giving a very, very quick introduction. So at Intel in Navis Korea, what we do is to support people. You could be working in the IT sector or you're trying to go in that sector. What we do is to support people. So we organize trainings, we have full-fledged trainings, and then we have people with CV and stuff like that. But there is something I've been thinking. For quite a while now, there's been lots of concern about, yes, I need a job, but um, there's this COS problem, there's this visa challenge that lots of persons that are non-natives here, like myself as well, struggle with. And that's one major thing influencing what we're doing tonight. And then we've seen in recent times, I mean, if you're in the UK or if you're conversant with immigration matters in the UK, you are, you understand the fact that there have been lots of things that have happened in recent times with regards to certificate of sponsorship, COS, as we call it for short, um, in the ed sector, lots of people have paid lots of money and all of this has caused plenty imbroglio in that area. And people struggle with these things. So today's session, what I'm bringing is an area where if you have skill or even if you already have the skill set in digital technology, say data analytics, business analytics or something in that direction, you can actually apply for roles that will sponsor you and will afford you that job satisf satisfaction as well and a very good pay. And today I'm going to be zooming in tonight's conversation on digital performance analyst rules. So that's what my conversation tonight is going to be centered on. So it's going to be a lot more about digital performance analysis. So I'll be discussing a lot more about performance analysis. And I won't be discussing mainly about just what the role is about or trying to discuss the role. No, I'm going to be picking it with regards to job adverts that are out there. So that's the direction of the conversation. Okay. So I was looking at this role, and as I said, this is something that I'll be discussing a lot about tonight. Digital performance analysts with specific focus within the NHS. Now, why did I go to the NHS? The reason is because, rule of thumb, NHS is an organization that employs lots of people, and you'll see it when we start speaking a lot more details. And apart from that, the possibility of getting this certificate of sponsorship is uh, higher, the, 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 the probability is higher there within the NHS. And the role that we're discussing tonight is something that can afford lots of people the opportunity to get COAs, to work in the NHS, to work in the IT sector in digital technology and give you that satisfaction. And that's the reason, basically. Now, I'll be looking at some jobs right now that have expired, but I just want to speak to you about what is required for the rule, and then I'll go into the demo session tonight so as to prep you to know there are opportunities out there that we need to go and annex. There are lots of opportunities that we can go for. And apart from everything I've said, 
the other direction of my conversation is this. You might not be looking for jobs. You might run an organization. You have a small, medium enterprise, and you have a website. How do you monitor performance? So what I'll be discussing today is in two directions. For those that will be using this knowledge and this conversation in the job market to go search for job, to go apply for job, to go work for organization. And some other persons are entrepreneurs. You already have a website. You already have a job. You already have something you're building, you're developing. How exactly do you monitor performance? How exactly do you know how you are doing? So that's a two direction. So wherever you fall in tonight, either you're somebody that's going to, I need to go apply for this job. I need to get this COS. That's number one. Well, I'm fine. I've got my own organization. Uh, maybe I'm an event, you know, event organizer or whatever, or I do events or I'm a decorator and I've got a website. I want to monitor traffic. I want to know how my website is performing. I'm doing some digital marketing. I'm putting some stuff on Facebook, on YouTube. I want to know how this is performing. How can I improve the way I get leads, the way I convert people in my organization, whatever. What we're discussing tonight is going to be of value. I don't have a doubt for everyone in tonight's conversation. So let's look at the first job I want to talk about. Now look at this job. So this job is expired. Performance analysis. So this is a job that I really will be discussing tonight. So performance analysis, what do they do? What are some of the skill sets that is required for them? So that's what we'll be discussing in tonight's meeting and if you look at this rule for example although it is now closed but i thought i'm going to mention it and then you see some of the stuff that we'll be discussing how they give value the main duties of this job is going to be your ability to handle large data sets with clear understanding of how to clean it process it, analyze it and visualize it and we're going to do everything there tonight we're going to get a very large data set tonight we're going to be able to clean it we're going to process it, we're going to analyze, and we'll visualize that particular data set that I'll be showing you tonight. And if you're interested, I can share the data set with you, and then you can go and try this thing as well, and try to reproduce these things. That's how we all learn and get better. And then we'll talk about key performance indicators. We have goals and all of those things, and the advanced analysis, interpretation, complex data to create compelling evidence-based actionable data stories. All of these things will try to run through them today. But if you scroll down, that's an interesting bit I want to say to you. If you scroll down, apart from all that has been said about the job, now the job says applications from job seekers who require current skilled work sponsorship to work in the UK are welcomed and will be considered along all other applications now. I decided to bring this one to let everybody know that when we talk about sponsorship in the NHS, we don't need to work um, as carer or as support worker for us to get sponsorship. While it is great to be a carer, it's amazing to be a support worker because you're supporting people. I mean, it's a job that you really see the value of what you're doing, supporting people that can't really help themselves in a couple of ways. But if that is not your area, what I'm trying to say tonight is, there is also opportunity for you, as you can see right now. So this kind of job will be able to offer you visa sponsorship. And this job is paying 35 to 42 grand. Yeah, this is band six within the NHS. Now there's another one I'm gonna to show to you again. So this is another job again, performance analyst rule. So this is NHS Scotland. This also has expired. But I said, I'm definitely going to show you all these stuffs before I even start going into any PowerPoint slide. So you can see this is also band seats. This is 37 to 46. So this kind of job also, they have the possibility of being able to afford visa sponsorship for people that have applied and when they get the right candidate, basically. And then if you just go through Google search, you're going to see lots of rules in this area within the NHS. Data analysis, or more specifically, 
digital performance analyst, performance analyst, and all of that. And what exactly is this about? You know, the NHS, like many organizations, they've got different web portal where different people go to for whatever. And then they've got mobile apps as well. So they want to be able to see how this web portal and the mobile app, how are they performing? That's performance analysis. Like, how many people download this app? How many people are still using it? How many people that downloaded it, maybe they've deleted it, or they even have it in their phone, they are not using it. How many persons go to our website? How long did they stay there? Did they stay there for long, or did they just vamoose? They didn't see value in what they are doing, or they stayed there for a long while. They visited one page, another page, another page. And where are they coming from? Are they coming from maybe this part of the country, the other part of the country? What exactly are they doing? Are they getting value? What exactly do we want them to do on the website? Are they doing it? What do we want them to do on the app? Are they doing it? Those kind of very, very valuable questions are what you'll be able to answer from your analysis that you give to your stakeholders. Yeah? So if I come here again, you're going to see a couple of these more. So this is another one I'm going to talk about. So this is digital performance analysis as well. You can see this is web. So this one is going to be web-based. And the NHS, for example, I've got different channels. So they have lots of digital channels. The job of this person is to be able to visit all of these different channels and be able to know how they are performing and come up with different insights, you know? Social media is also an important part of the NHS website service. And we reach millions of people, month through Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. We believe this is important for people and all of that. So what do they want? Somebody that can get all of this data, analyze, process and analyze this data, review, analyze, and report how they are performing. So yeah, using web analytics. <clears throat> okay. The whole idea is, you're going to be able to get insight, valuable information, actionable insight that can be used. And then the, 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 there's different directions. We have Adobe Analytics and Google Analytics web trend as well, but we'll be zooming in on this Google Analytics tonight. But I wanted to let you know what exactly is the whole idea, like a kind of very, very big picture. And then I'll zoom in into the conversation tonight. Once again, if you look at this link right now, you would see different jobs. Data analyst, data analyst, this is 42. This is, yeah, there's no amount to this one. Data analyst, this is 28, 43. Business analyst, senior data developer analyst. You see performance analyst as well, improvement analyst. Different kind of title, different kind of title, but they're kind of saying the same thing. I hope you get the message when I say, you can get visa sponsorship. Working with the NHS, that is very happy to give visa to the right person when you come with these digital skills, either as a data analyst or as a business analyst, there's lots of opportunities out there. Now I have one last one I want to review as well. In this Word document, this one is also expired. I think this expired two days ago. So this performance analyst, band 8A, Working, I think this should be in leads with the NHS. And I decided to put some stuff to highlight the area I want to talk about very, very quickly. Now, as a performance analyst, what are you going to be doing? You're going to be looking at the different channels and to be able to get data, process this data, and come up with actionable insights. And they say that NHS England has got a team of over 2,700 information analysts, technology, and project management experts. So you can see the NHS as a big organization is not just those that can give medications or a medical doctor or have gone to med school, but with your digital skill, you can also get there. Notice the reason why I'm emphasizing the NHS right now. It is because my conversation tonight or my intention tonight is tied not just job but jobs that have got potential for sponsorship. So that is the reason why tonight we are zooming in on the NHS and we're looking at roles that we can get working with the NHS. Even though we're not medical doctors, we're not nurses, we are not um what's it called support worker and anyone in that direction. So what's this role going to be about? Performance analysts. I've said it before, one or more of these digital channels or products 
and Adobe Analytics, Google Analytics, or WebTrend. But what we'll be using tonight is going to be Google Analytics. GA. Now, what are some of the stuff that this job is going to involve? You're going to use a Power BI or any business intelligence software. So the one we're using tonight is our long brother, long friend, Microsoft Excel. And then we'll also be going through Power Query and bringing it back to Microsoft Excel to be able to look at some of these data sets. Yeah. So, and I've done something in Python. I will just run through it. I'll just run through some things that I've done in Python just to make you understand when we go to the demo session. So the idea is to be able to perform data analysis, visualization, create compelling evidence-based and actionable data story. You know, these key performance indicators is always coming and coming and coming because it's part of the things you need to have what exactly is the definition of success? So you get what you're measuring and then you set a bar that when you're here, you know you are doing well. And when you're not here, you're not doing well. That kind of key performance indicator thing that we'll always be talking about. So we're going to be getting data tonight, do some visualization. That's exactly what the role is about. Data visualization, Tableau, Power BI, Google Charts, and all that. You can see Adobe Analytics appearing here again. Tonight, we're going to collect data collate data, we're going to cleanse data, and we're going to be able to interpret data as well. What does this rule require again? As I've always said, Google Analytics. So we're not using this one tonight, but we're using this one tonight. So this is where I want to welcome you to tonight's session as we zoom in into our presentation tonight. So if you're with me and you're happy to go, let me see you just... Put any stuff in the message. Just type something in the message. Type like 11111 if you're with me, please. If you know you're with me and you're ready for tonight's session, if you just put 111 in the chat, I'll really appreciate that. To know. Thank you very much, Eunice. That's a good one. Yeah, I'm just watching my second screen right now. Yes, thank you, Blessing. Thank you, Peculiar and Christiana. Thank you very much. That's really good. So, that kind of gives me confirmation that I've got people in the room and you're following me through. Yes, Dick and Larry, I appreciate that. So today, let's talk about Google Analytics. What exactly is all these things I've been saying right now? So if you're working as a performance analyst, what I said earlier is it could be on a web or it could be on an app. You are basically trying to get lots of back-end data to be able to understand how exactly is the system performing. Is it performing well? Is it not performing well? Are there areas of improvement? Are there stuff that we can do? What exactly do you want to advise your stakeholder to do or not to do? That's exactly what it's going to be about. And a major tool that uh, you use in this area tonight that I'll be exploring is going to be this Google Analytics, and I'm going to talk about it, and I'll show you a demo about it, and then we'll process some data for everybody to follow through. So what my presentation is about is what we've started, Google Analytics, what are the key features and the benefits, and then we'll go straight to the demo session without wasting time. What's Google Analytics? Google Analytics is like a plugin. It's a free web analytics tool that is offered by Google that you plug into your website, and it's able to track traffic so and when we say it's tracking the traffic the traffic we mean the visitors people that are coming people that are using that your website is able to keep track of all of these visits to your website and the whole idea why you want to keep track of the people coming to your website and what they are doing on your website is basically for you to understand how they are interacting with your website so you can make informed decision so you can make what we call data driven decision you have a business and then you're doing lots of ad you're doing lots of marketing you want to be able to know this marketing that you're doing is it performing or is not performing is it doing well is it not doing well so that's the kind of idea so the only way you can know is by going to the back end and getting all of the data and how do you do that that's where google analytics comes some of the stuff that are the key features is number one traffic analysis you'll be able to know how people are coming where are they coming from that kind of a thing you know provides detailed reports on the volume of visitors how they arrive at your site and what they do there <clears throat> then we talk about audience insight demographic data the age or the gender or the interest or the geographical locations of the people visiting how do they come you've been doing lots of art are they coming from 
either organic or say paid search or through social media or through referrals. So you'll be able to know which medium is the one that is bringing people to your website a lot. So you know which one is not really working. You've been spending lots of money on paid ads and you realize that every person coming is organic and you, you need to be able to advise your stakeholder and say, there's probably no value in spending money here because it doesn't really bring stuff that we want. You know, that kind of decision, you don't just decide that we won't spend money. Why won't we spend money? Because lots of the traffic on this website, as you can see, 75% are this, 25% are this, and none is coming from our Facebook ad. So let's save money by stopping that. Informed decision, data-driven decision. That's exactly you, the way you advise your stakeholder. You've seen the performance from the data, and then you can advise. And then we can obviously analyze all of these things and get some report and advise our stakeholder in this regard. Now, look at this now. You have this website, for example. And what is the goal of this, your website? The goal of this website is that you are selling a product. And the product you're selling, what it means is any person that comes to your website, you want the person to part with some pounds. So this is your goal. Now, for you to be able to achieve this, you probably have done some ad on Facebook. You want to know the people that are shopping here, are they coming from Facebook? Now, you will notice the journey. Coming to my website and putting some things in the cart, some persons, they just jump off. They don't really part with any pounds. So you want to monitor that and begin to understand why is this happening? Why is it that they come, they put some stuff in the cart and then they go away? They don't buy. All of this behavior you want to see. Now, your own website might not be like e-commerce website. It might just be for to showcase some stuff or just to educate. Or it might even be a church website, for example. You want to be able to analyze the different pages of that your church website and know where exactly do visitors go. Where do visitors just come and they bounce off? In two seconds or two microseconds, they are off that site. And you begin to know there might be some pain point here. Maybe the information here is not of value or the web is not optimized and stuff like that. You begin to take these decisions and you have some YouTube as well. Where are they coming from? They are coming from Instagram. They are coming from maybe some Google ads that you've done. There are different channels through which people come into this your website and you want them to be able to put some stuff in the cart and you want them to be able to part with some pounds and be happy at the close of the day. So that is the journey you want them to go through. Google Analytics at the back end gives you all of this information which you can get. And the benefit is when you make decisions, it's going to be data driven. So it's going to be based upon the data that you're making business decision. And you can also improve marketing. You've already seen that your marketing on Facebook, on YouTube, and Instagram, and you know which one is performing, which is not performing. Then you can drop some and work more on some. You can do lots of improvement, lots of optimization. And then when you get lots of user behavior, you'll be able to know where to improve on your website so as to enhance the user experience. And of course, performance monitoring. You want to track different metrics and put some bar to know where exactly do you want to be? Are you there or you're not there? What do you need to do to get there? That kind of a thing. Performance monitoring is another thing that you can do with all of this. Now, having said all these things, it's not going to be lots of presentation with PowerPoint slide. Slide is over right now. Let's go into what we call the demo straight up. So in this demo that I want to show to you, so this is typically what Google Analytics look like. So you can see lots of stuff right now. And you can see overview. You can see different events, when people come, what they do, the landing page, how they come, and all of that. But this is not what we're going to be using. So what we're using is a very big data set. So what I want us to achieve tonight is, as you saw in those job ads, they tell you about collecting data cleansing data and being able to process data to get valuable insights. So that's exactly what we want to do tonight. So if you look at this particular data set, what you see on my screen, it takes some good amount of seconds to open up. This is lots of data here. And if I just take one column, 
you'll be able to see that it's got about 903,000 rows. 903,000 rows. So that's almost 1 million row in this data set that you see on screen. So you can see this is really big. This is really massive. And apart from that, this data set is meant to be clean. It's meant to be very, very clean data sets, you know. But, but, despite the fact that you see it as a fully structured data, but it's kind of semi-structured because you see some JSON stuff in this. For example, look at this data set, everybody. Let's try to look at it column by column. So column number A talks about the channel. So, and when we say channel, we're trying to say, how are people coming into this uh, website? So that's what we're talking about there. Yeah, so different kind of channels. And then we have date on this column. This is the interesting bit I want you to see. Now, let me just do this thing one minute. Formula bar. Now, this is the interesting bit I want you guys to see. What you notice is inside this cell is this curly bracket like JSON formatting, and it's got lots of different data. So this is the data on the device that the person that have accessed this website. So let's say you've got this job as a performance analyst right now, and you're working with the NHS in Leeds or in Scotland or Newcastle, and then you've got this data that has been downloaded from your Google Analytics or whichever one that you have. Now, what does this mean to you? This column called device has got lots of columns nested inside of it. So if I take this cell, C2, Look at what's in C2, guys. You will see that it has information on what kind of browser is a person using. Chrome, what is the version? This one says not available. What is the size? What's the operating system? Windows. What's the version of the operating system? Another thing again, is a person on mobile or is on desktop? This is false. You see? Then what's the branding? So want to know, is the person using Samsung or stuff like that? So there's lots of information embedded there. So at the close of the day, when you're analyzing this data that they've given to you in this very, very raw and crude format, you need to break everything down. You need to split it down into more columns. So that's exactly what's going to happen. And we'll look at it in a minute. Don't you worry about that. Now, apart from this one that is nested, I have another one that's nested here. If you come to this one that talks about the geography, the location, yeah? So if I come to this cell now, you will see it tells you about the continent. Is it in Asia, subcontinent, Western Asia, country, Turkey, what's the region, and different other information that you get from there. Now look at this total again. Another series of columns here. The visits, the eats that the person had, the page views, the bounds, new visit, yes or no. So you can see lots of information inside one cell. Look at this. Campaign, through Google, or organic, or wherever. Now, what am I trying to say? This is typically what you see when we say this particular data is not ready for you to do any analysis. So you need to be able to take this data in this state that is not clean, that is not ready. You need to be able to process it, do some cleaning, and make it ready and make it useful for your analysis. Okay? And this data set is really, really big. So I've done some <coughs> pre-processing for this session because it might take a while for us to do some of this processing. Now, the processing that I've done, I've used Python to do some basic processing, yeah? So I've used Python to be able to do stuff. And I've processed the data to some point, to some point, and then I'm going to show you the processed data as we go ahead with our analysis tonight. So now this data that you can see it has only this column, but no, the column is more than 50. It has over 50 columns because I said to you, we're going to be able to split all of this. So I've done the splitting of all this before this session. I've done this one as well. I've done this. I've done this. So I've been able to open it up and then it, it's now very, very wide. So it's got like 50 something columns. So imagine these data sets. When it's been processed, it's now going to have like 50 something columns and it's going to have over 900 rows. So at the close of the day, I did a simple multiplication and this data search we'll be using tonight, it's got over 45 million cells. So each, this, this is a cell. Each of the cell where you have information is going to be more than 45 million. 
So you can see when we say you're working with huge data set, that's exactly what we're doing tonight. So let's go and do some simple analysis and visualization for us to be able to make some sense out of this particular data. So I'm going to open a brand new Excel file. So this is just me, brand new Microsoft Excel, and then we want to begin to try to do stuff together. So I'm going to call in the new data. And the new one I'm trying to say is the clean one, the one that I've cleaned right now. So what you do in Excel is this. Whenever you want to do stuff, in Excel, Microsoft, there's another part of Excel we call Power Query, Power Query Editor. So that is a tool that is used to do lots of transformation to your data. So Power Query Editor is connected to Microsoft Excel as well as Power BI. So we're not discussing Power BI tonight, but I'll just mention Power BI as I get on with my conversation. So but Power BI, we can use Power BI to do what we're doing tonight, but I thought we do with our old friend Microsoft Excel, what we can also do in Power BI. So Power Query Editor is where we take the data to in the first instance. We can do lots of cleaning in Power Query Editor. And when we're done with Power Query Editor, we'll bring it back to Microsoft Excel, and then we'll use Pivot Charts we're going, to, we're going to go to pivot tables, from pivot tables to pivot charts, and then we'll build this into a kind of interactive visualization dashboard where you can click this button and then you see everything filter. You click the other button and you can see different stuff. And I'm going to try to make it interactive and try to hear you guys come up with some ideas, come up with some suggestion, what you think we should be looking at as we go about analyzing this very big data set. Believe me, as I've shown to you, it is big data set. It's got at least 45 million different cells. So now let's go. You come to this place. If you look at these tabs now, you see data. So this is where we want to call in the data that we need. Excel, you can get data from different sources. You can get even from picture. If, I, if you've sent me like a receipt, for example, I can extract it into Excel. So there's a lot of different data sources that you can pull from. So tonight we're pulling from a CSV. So I'm going to say from test CSV, that's where I'm pulling from. When I click on that button, then I know the folder. I know the folder where this is. It's in this my master class folder. Now in this folder, I've got a lot of data, but the one that I've cleaned is this one. So I just put this as clean copy. So if I mess up this one, I still have a copy there. It's a very good idea to just keep a copy. So if anything happens, you're still safe. So I'm going to call this data hub and I'll say import. So you can see the button here and then I'll import it. So it's going to import. And when it comes, we're going to go to Power Query Editor to do some cleaning. So this is the data set that we're having right now. And this just shows us part of it anyways. This is not everything. The data in the preview has been truncated due to size limit. So of course, you know, we're not going to see everything because it's very, very long. As I said to you, it's about 900,000 in rows. Okay, so now we're not going to load this thing right now. We're going to go transform the data. So I'm going to click on this button. When I click on this button, it will open a different environment. Now, this environment is Power Query Editor. And this is where all of the fanciful stuff happen. Now, in Power Query Editor, you also have different ribbons and tabs like you have in Microsoft Excel. But with time, we'll get to know what all of these they do. One thing I always do whenever I come to Power Query Editor is to ensure that my different columns, they are in the right format I want them to be. So that's very, very important. They must be in the right format that you want them to be. Because if they are not in the right format, you're going to run into a different problem when you want to go start to analyze your data, either in Microsoft Excel or Power BI as a case may be. Okay? So now we're going to go start to do some cleaning in this. Is everybody ready for us to go Power Query Editor right now? Everybody ready? Hello, let me get some confirmation. So I'm I'm going to turn off my turn off my video right now so the computer and doesn't drag because of this data that we'll be working on and 
at some point again, I'll come back on video. Yes, Newton, thank you very much. I'm ready. Thank you, Peculiar. Yes, I appreciate that message. So I'm going to turn off the video and then we go and start doing some processing of this data. Yes, thank you very much, guys. Good. So if you look at this data set, I said to you that one thing that is key here is, guys, you need to make sure that the format is clear in the right format. We'll, we'll find time to discuss all of these things. In Park Query Editor, one thing where we can do is we can select the different columns that we want. And that is one thing that I'm going to do right now. We don't need all of the columns. It's got lots of columns you would notice, see? So it's got lots of columns. So because I said to you, those ones that were that was nested the other time opened up and then it's now brought in lots of columns, which is the right thing to do. But we don't need all of the columns, at least for what we want to do tonight. So to be able to do that in Power Query Editor, you come here, you say choose column. When you click on choose column, you have all your columns. Everything will be listed for you. And then you can select the one that you really want. So you can see all the columns in this right now. There are more than 50 columns, but we don't need all the columns for the analysis that uh, is in my head for us to do. So let's uncheck this button. And um, we're gonna check the different columns that we want to bring in for our analysis. So it's a good thing for me to see the channel grouping. So we know where stuffs are coming from. Is it from organic or, or is it from referral or wherever? It's very good for me to have my date, time series. You know, I want to see my performance over time. Very important to have that as well. Now, when I select the one in my mind, or if anybody is in the chat and you think anyone should be selected, you can drop a message in the chat, or you have any question about why aren't why are we not going to select this or that? You are very free to unmute your mic and ask a question, or you can drop a message. So I'm not going to restrict you to say till after the session. After the session, it's good for Q&A, but while the session is on, if you have any specific question on what we are doing that operation, I'm very happy for you to break me. You can interject me, and then we can talk about it. So I think date is important. What else would I think is important here? We want to look at the device browser. Like, um, what kind of browser is the person using? Is it Edge? Is it Google Chrome? Is it Opera Mini? So we know how we are building our website to be optimized for any of these browsers. Uh, visit number, some of these are just identifiers. So you might want to ask why I'm not selecting some stuff. Some are just identifiers. But before I do this, why don't I even do something? Let me just show you what I mean. So if you click on this, this doesn't mean anything. This is just numbering. Now look at this. If you click on this drop down, you will see the different stuff. So we want to be able to see the different channels. So that's what's contained there. This is date. That's fine. So this is just identifiers. So I'm not going to use this one for my analysis. So I definitely don't need that. Uh, session ID. So you can see these IDs are just identifiers. So I don't really need them for what I want to do. Okay, now if I come here, you can see this is just one distinct. So this doesn't really have any value for what we want to do. So we also don't need that. Uh, visit ID, this is just an identifier as well. We don't need this in our analysis. So I just want to show to you the rationale behind the selection process. So you get an idea like, hey, hang on. Why is he saying that some columns are not going to be brought in for analysis? So you get a clue as to what I'm talking about, why some of these columns are not coming to analysis, okay? So now let me go select stuff now. So if I uncheck this and I say I want this channel grouping, I want this date, I want my device browser, and then I want to know the operating system. I don't care to know the version of the browser. If it is version 9.1, it's not of much value. I don't care to know the size. And then the operating system as well. I'm not really going to worry about the version of the operating system, but I'm really interested to know if this person's visiting my website, they are using mobile or they are not using mobile. Say they are using desktop or something like that. So that's a very good information to know. And I'm not interested in the branding. I don't care if it's using Samsung or Infinix or Techno. But all of this information are very important depending on the analysis that you're working on. I mean, this is performance analysis we're doing tonight. 
it's the objective that I have in mind. That is what is influencing what I'm selecting. So you might cl clearly have a different objective, then you will select different ones depending on your objectives. So I just want us to know that, that my selections tonight aren't cast on stone, which is because of what I'm trying to do. Uh, what else do I need? I might as well leave every other thing here. I don't really worry about the model, about flash version, about the language or what. I'm just going to go to the geography. I want to look at the location. I'm not interested in the continent or the subcontinent. I'm just going to take only the country. There's no point for me to know if it's coming from Asian continent or American or Africa, but I'll leave it at the country level. For you, for example, you're working for an organization and you want to look at how your app is performing. You might want to really see everything across continent. It all depends on what you're working on. So sometimes it's case by case basis. City might be a very good thing you want to see for what you're doing. I mean, if the app is mainly used in Nigeria, I want to see where exactly are they visiting? Is it in Warri? Is it in Lagos? Is it in Kano? So you might want this level of information in your analysis. I don't need that level of information in my analysis, so I'm going to do without it. So that's just the idea. And here, yeah, I might want to see also the total visits, how many hits that um, I get, and then the page views, okay? The bounces, new visits are also very good. And the total transaction is another thing I'll be interested to see. And where is this traffic coming from? What's the medium would be another good thing for me to see. So these are the columns that I'll be interested in for what I want to do tonight. So because I've selected only this few, so one thing you will notice is immediately I say, okay, all these ones that I did not select, they are going to leave. So I would have successfully been able to reduce the amount of space that is being occupied in my system or occupied by my model based upon the fact that lots of columns are going to be thrown away. Thrown away, not like thrown away per se, but I'm not bringing them into where my analysis is going to be running shortly. So if I say, okay, now. So some of all of those ones are not going to come. And you see this Power Query Editor is very powerful. All of these applied steps are here. When we brought from the source, promoted headers, like the top rules being the name, and then changing the type, and this is what we've just done right now. So if I just click this button, like delete, it will go back to where it was before. Now, why is this Power Query Editor good? This Power Query Editor is good because when I finish this analysis right now and say I'm working in a team with somebody, new team is one of my teammates, we all are working together in the same organization, and these data sets are coming in batches, okay? So I've got this particular batch of data sets, and then I process everything like this. When new team gives me another batch, I don't need to repeat all of these steps. Depends on how you've built your workflow. Say I've built it in the form of a folder. So I can actually call it from a folder, and then I'll say new team just put the new batch of data into the folder. When I run it, depends on the way I set it, it will pull the new data. Everything that we've just done right now, it will do it again in the new one, and then you'll be able to get what you're looking for. Like straight, it's a way of automating that your workflow, which is very, very important. That's Power Query Editor for you. So it's gonna help you cleanse your data as you see what we're doing right now, do some transformation of the data, and also automate your entire analytics workflow. Very, very important. If I'd wanted to do a lot more stuffs, I can start doing them here. I can obviously change maybe any of this header. You might say, why is it showing device or this? I can change it. And if I want to maybe split this, if there's anyone I want to split the column, I can split column. I can do a lot of stuff whilst I'm here. <coughs> Minimal transformation for tonight. Because the data, I said to you, I've done some work already in Python before bringing it here. So I've done some work in Python earlier, and now we've been able to do this sort of transformation. And what we did basically is just to be able to remove some columns. That's what we did right now. So when you've done this now, we'll be leaving Power Query Editor to go to Microsoft Excel. And how do I do that? If I come here and then I can close and load or close and apply to. So, but I'm going to say close and load. So when I close and load, you will see the new table right now. So I want you to see the table. So whereas the table has got about 50 something columns, 
because we've removed some columns right now, when I close and load and we see the table, you will notice that the table has obviously reduced. So if I say close and load, so Power Query Editor goes and it brings us back to our cell. So, see how many rules have come now. So it's just going to be bringing all of them here. So it's going to take a while because the data set is really big. Okay, good, good, good. So this is what we have now. This is what we have now. So this one is a lot more sizable compared to what we were having before. So this is not as big and heavy like it was before. So I've got this kind of nice stuff, you know. So everything is now removed some different columns and I have lesser number of columns. We can obviously check to see how many columns we have now. So this is just where I stopped. So this is... How many columns? Uh, I think this should be 10, if I remember very well. So it's less than 15 columns. 1, 2, 3, 4. This is 5, this is 6, this is 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. About 13 columns. So we were having 50-something columns. If I think about 54 columns. Now we've brought in only 13 columns for what we want to do. So in analysis tonight, there's going to be some interesting thing we want to see. Now, I've been talking about what performance analysis is about what we might be doing so i want to involve people right now in this call you can unmute yourself or type something in the chat tell me what do you think would be a good thing to see just assume that you are the owner of this website now now in this your website we people are visiting your website you want to know a lot about your website based upon all my conversation today and now i'm working for you as a performance analyst what do you think would be interesting for you to see so anybody, let's come up with some idea. Let's bounce off ideas. What do you think would be interesting for you to see, please? Come on, guys. Can I, yes, please. Total visits per browser. Okay, interesting. So you'll be able to say, now if you look at this browser now, you've got different browsers here. So what he's talking about right now, he wants to know like how many persons are using BlackBerry or this kind of iPhone or they are using Chrome or they are using Firefox or they are using Edge. Yeah, that makes sense. That makes sense. So we should be able to see that in our analysis tonight. Thank you very much for that. Total visits by country. So basically, we're going to be able to know we've got different countries right now. We want to see which country are most of our visitors coming from. Because this might be a business that we've just set up and then we're all over the internet. We want to know which countries. Is it the United Kingdom, Indonesia, Spain, or Pakistan that lots of our people are coming in from? It's another very good metric to be able to capture so we know the people that really are our customers. Yet that is by country. Which countries are people viewing from? Yeah, yeah. All of those are very, very valuable stuff for us to be able to gather. I think I really like this conversation. And then if you look at this channel, grouping we want to see where exactly are they coming from are they coming from some affiliates you know affiliate marketing and all of those things or direct display or organic they are just coming or paid search or referral or through different social medium all of these are very good information we might want to capture and then if you come here again you can see the medium source here we can say exactly what's happening here is the organic affiliate click per view or stuff like that, CPC, CPM, organic or refra, all of these are very valuable information. And then we might want to talk about the revenue as well, the total revenue, where exactly are we getting the highest revenue? Is it the people that are on Chrome or is it the people that are in Pakistan that are giving us the highest revenue? Notice there's nothing appearing here, but there are some stuff. If you go down, that's where you see stuff. So there are lots of information, okay? As always, it is not everybody that visits your site that really maybe purchases or does anything. So think about it in that perspective. So, but there are information in some other of the cells. 
And yes, somebody else has put something there. Thanks a lot, Taiwo. Which device is as the highest bounce rate? Okay, that's an interesting one. I didn't even think about that. So bounce rate now, they come and they go. So he's, as he's really thinking like a good performance analyst. We want to see which devices is having the highest bounce rate. So we can say, for example, this our website is not really optimized for uh, maybe MacBook or something like that. Because if I've got people that are using this particular device now, so Macintosh, so that is um, Apple product, and they are having too much bounce, so that might actually be maybe it's not really optimized for their own operating system and they can't view it very well. Maybe we've just looked at Windows because if you do web development, you will see that as part of your building, it gets to the point where you want to make sure that what you've done is optimized for this operating system, for the other operating system. Either I, I mean, that's a different conversation right now, but I just want to highlight that idea it really makes sense to me. The platform that people assess the website with, is it mobile or is it website to inform where to invest to improve user experience? You know what I like what Bibian just said is this. As a performance analyst, you don't just want to say this is it. You know, you want to say the next thing, then what? So I always ask people, you've said this to me, that this, this, this from the data, then what? So I like the way she put it because you want to be able to tell your stakeholder about the data and then advise them. So that is what we call data-driven decision or informed decision. So that's the way Bibian put it. So you've done the analysis and you've been able to know where people are assessing more. Maybe they're assessing a lot more from website. And then you want to say, can we invest more here or there to be able to improve user experience. Thank you very much. Relationship between traffic source in relation to visit and the geo network. So you can you 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 can begin to see that we all are thinking like real performance analysts because you want to start brainstorming like what exactly do we need to look at from this data and what are the potential decisions that we can get across to our stakeholders to be able to do things better. So that's the overview of what we're trying to perform right now. So we might get some valuable insights with triggers to identifying where visitors are coming from, organic or paid, user behavior, understand how our users interact like page view, bounce and eat. Then we might want to look at device usage, want to know where are they using, uh, which device they are using, then geography as well. So now let's go for it. Now I've got this big data set now. We've cleaned it. This data is clean. No question about that. It's time to start analyzing it. So what we're going to use to analyze this data is going to be pivot. So we're going to create from this a pivot table. So when you create a pivot table, a pivot table makes your analysis easier because it's able to do lots of the aggregations that you would have been writing lots of formulas to do that. So if I come here and then I say summarize with pivot table, for example, now, so it's going to create a pivot table for me. And when it creates a pivot table, it's going to say this table, everything here, I say, yes, clean data, everything. So where should the pivot table go? It's going to go to a new sheet. So it's going to come to another sheet or existing sheet. No, I want you to go to, to a new sheet. Okay. Add to data model, we're not doing all of those stuff right now. We're not doing like more complex data modeling, relationship, fact table, or dimension tables. That's not what we're looking at. So let's just keep it simple as it is. Let's create something like this. So I'm going to OK this, and then it will create for me a pivot table. Now I've got this pivot table. Pivot table makes analysis really, really smooth, really, really quick and everything. So now. You're going to think about what you want to do. If you look at all the displays, it contains all the columns where we're coming from. That's what we have here. Now, these four boxes, all of these feeds, now contains the way you want to structure this, your pivot table. Okay? Now, roles, this value, you can see this sign, this summation sign from what we've done in college. So, the stuff that uh, you can perform 
mathematical operations on, they usually would go to values. So it can sum, it can average, it can do different mathematical operation is going to go here, okay? And then this row is going to be by what do you want to see? So this is like the dimension right now, and this is like the fact. So let's put date. Say we want to see how we're performing over time, basically. So I'm going to bring in here date. So when I bring in date, notice I've got the different years. And then it's been able to give me different layers. We'll look at that in a minute. Okay. So what do we want to see with respect to time? Okay. We want to see something with respect to time right now. Let's look at visit. We might want to see the visit and the new visit with respect to time. So if I bring in total visits here, for example, it will tell me how many people are visiting. Then I can see how many new ones are coming as well. So it will give me that bit of information here. So if there's any other one I want to see with this, I can obviously do that. So for this now, it's giving me some very nice stuff. And then one thing I can do is to so this one, I don't like this uh, this kind of aggregation. I will say ungroup this for me. So I can ungroup this. So when I ungroup to give me everything, then I can group it. I think I should group it to months. There's something I'm trying to achieve here, months. Good. So this looks good to me. Now let me just do a little bit of formatting. I like to put this comma here. I kind of like this thing. And then let's put some condition formatting. Let's put some condition formatting. Let's see. So that whenever you just come here, you can easily see very, very quickly which one is performing well or which one is not. So let's use color bars. We can use different stuff, but let's use color bars for this right now. I'm going to try this one. So I've got this kind of very nice stuff. So... I can easily see that lots of the visits, so you can see some of the, this is total visits and these ones are new. So you can see everything here. I said to you before that we can change some of these headers. So all of these things we can really capture as we progress. So you can see this right now. Mm, this looks good. I might want to bring in some more information. Um, I might want to bring in some stuff. Maybe put another column here. What can I put with this? Let's think about bounce. Let's see bounce here. Yeah. The sum of bounce as well. So we can see the total visits. And then we can see those that are new and those that are bouncing. But this is, remember, with respect to time. That's absolutely fine. That's absolutely fine. So we can look at this thing with respect to different other metrics as we progress. So I'm going to call this. Let me rename this. I can call this. Yeah, I'm just going to rename this as my metrics table. And uh, yeah, so if this is my metrics table right now, so this is looking good. I can actually do something else. You want to get visualization from this stuff. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? In this, if you come again to this, your pivot, pivot is very, very strong. Apart from the fact that you're getting this, your pivot table, you can now use it to build visuals. You can use it to build visuals. So when I come here right now, pivot table analyze, I'm going to say pivot chart. And it will give me different suggestions. So I can choose this one. If this is okay by me, I can use this one. So you can just look at different ones that might be good for what you're trying to do. So I think this kind of clustered bar chart might be a good one. If we like clustered bar charts, this might be good for us. Let's see. So in visualization, want to look at which one is good. So what exactly can we see here? You would notice that between January and up until this time, the sum of total visits, yes, yeah, we're having some. And in November, I don't really know why there are lots of people visiting. So this might be maybe an e-commerce store. I don't know, and people shopping for Christmas. I don't know why people are visiting, but one thing we can see is that there seems to be a peak always around November 
with regards to the number of people visiting. And then let's look at the bounce. Let's see where people are bouncing. So, uh, yeah, people come here. Yeah, it's, it, it's kind of very, very stable, the amount of bounce that we're having. And this as well, lots of people come in and then the bounce of probably black market period. You see, this is the idea as an analyst. So you begin to think, so this is where we begin to tell some stories. So you can tell a story and now look at this thing and you can connect it to some things in the news, just as Larry has done. He's been able to figure out there might be a reason for this, which it might be correct. So uh, I, I will, I, I'll, I'll take that. So now let's be very, very quick right now as we do some more stuff. So I'm going to hide all of these feeds right now. And then usually we should be able to put a label. So it's always good if I put like a, an header axis title. No, sorry, not axis title, chat title, I wanted to say. So this is going to be some of visit and bounce. Okay, so we can just give it a name, just, yeah, just something so we understand what it is that we're talking about. I would like to drag this thing, oh no, this my legend, I would like to drag it somewhere here. And then just make my shot occupy lots more of my space. So what we are trying to build tonight is going to be a dashboard. So I'll copy this thing, I can cut this actually. So, but let me just copy this thing and take it to a new place and then I'll drop it here. So I'm going to just drop this one here, but just leave this, we're going to come back to it. So that's the first thing we've done. From this one, we have this analysis. So we, have, we want to analyze again, is it mobile or is it the other way around? So now let me go. Where is my table again? So this is my clean data set. So I can keep creating different pivot. Sometimes I can do without doing it that way. But for tonight, I'm just going to create another pivot because the more time I do it, I think the better we all are going to understand this thing. So I'm going to create different pivot table tonight. So I'm going to create another pivot table. So I'm going to create another pivot table. So there's pivot table, as you can see here. There's a power pivot. So, but what we're doing tonight is if I come here, if I insert, if I insert a pivot table and it's going to give me to another sheet as well. So it will create something similar to what we had. But what I just want to see, what I just want to see is simple right now. I want to see, is it mobile or is it not mobile? That's the simple stuff I want to see. So if I take this one and bring it here. So count of device that is mobile. This is the count of device that is mobile right now. Okay. So this gives me the number of device that is mobile. So the other one, obviously, they are not mobile. Okay. Uh, one minute. Let me take this one out. First of all, let me draw. I'm going to do right now a line chart. Let's do a line graph. If I bring this date here on this place, if I bring this date here, somebody want to really look at the revenue that we're generating, for example. And then if I come to revenue, so I can see revenue right now, and then we can see this stuff. So I'm going to build this one shortly into a line graph for us to see. So I've got this, and then I'm going to create from this right now, a pivot chart. And for this pivot chart this time around, let's use this. We can use this for this. So I'm going to use this one now. So if I say, okay, I'm going to have this. So the, if you look at the granularity, it's still giving me this format, but I'm going to ungroup this. So it gives me the entire stretch. So I want you to give me the entire stretch. So this is what I want to see. So this is revenue. Now it's giving me count here. Let me change this count to sum now. We should be able value feed setting sum. Okay, this. Okay. Uh, one minute. So let's leave it at the account of the total transactions revenue. 
is this data for one year or two years? So the data is for two years. As you can see, we have 2016 and we also have 2017. So there's 2016, there's 2017. So that's why you see from the 1st of August in 2016 up until 27th of July in 2017. So what we had in the first time, it aggregated everything according to months, but right now we want to see the entire time series. So that's what we're trying to do here. So that's what we're trying to do, okay? So now, if I remove this one, any one I put, it will also give me something. So if I say, I want to see the total eats, for example, if I bring this one here, you can see the total eats for this period. So what do I notice here? I can see the ones in 2016 seems to be high and there's a very, very big dip around December period in 2016. And it kind of looking like, a cycle just going up and down and it's very very stable and then there's a peak around this time so there might be an event at this particular point in time that has brought about this so that is the general way we want to look at this data and begin to understand what could have happened that has brought about this or what could have done the other thing that caused it and now this total is that we're looking at right now we can remove it now and say no I want to even change it to visits, okay? So any way you want it, you can put it, depends on what you are visualizing. Now, I want to split this thing now into different category. And I'm looking for the best category to use that does not have too much stuff in it. If I use browser, browser has too many different categories. Browser can have too many different categories and it's going to cause lots of uh, separation in the stuff. So you can see what happens here. So because you have different categories for the browser, you can see all of them. But one thing that is evident from this analysis is that Chrome, a lot of the guides are coming, a lot of the eats into our website are coming from the Chrome browser. So that is what is very, very clear and evident in what we're doing right now. It's coming from this Chrome browser. And apart from the Chrome browser, we can now start looking which other one is kind of making lots of it but basically we already know the device browser here it is chrome that lots are visiting but what i'm gonna do is i won't do it this way i will create a filter to be able to do this because there are too many whenever there are too many categories like that the right thing to do is do not put it here but create a filter for it so let's go and try to use a filter to achieve that very quickly so guys, I won't do too many formatting right now because of time. I want to make sure that I get this thing to a particular level within the time frame. So let me hide all of these stuffs and copy this as well and bring it to Okay. So this is what has happened because that our granularity that we had earlier, we've now changed it to, what's it called, to days, every day and no longer months. So this now like answer the question somebody was asking about, is it, is it uh, how long is the data? So to know how long is the data, but what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna keep this thing as month right now. I'll prefer this thing stays as month. So let this thing stay as month right now. We're, we're, we're better off if it stays as month. So where have we got that stuff? So let's group this thing as month. So I would rather this thing stay as month. Okay, let's keep this as month. So we can have it clean and neat. So we have this thing clean and neat. So we have this clean and neat. So we can now have this one as well. So if we have something like this. So what I want to do, guys, is to bring everything together in the form of a dashboard. So when you want to bring stuff in the form of a dashboard, you're going to have one of the visual is here. You can have another visual here and another one. So let me bring another visual, for example. If I copy this visual and then I bring it here. So I can have this visual here. So a dashboard is like what we saw there where you have different visuals together communicating. So now I've got all of these ones here. So this is, um, I think this should be visits, yeah. 
Yeah, I think this is website visits, if I remember very well. But if I if I go check and that's not it, I'm going to change it to the right stuff. Okay, now that we have something as simple as this, I want to give us another kind of visualization. So let me come to this, my original data. So if I come to this, my original data now, I can create once again, I'll create another different pivot table right now. So if I create another pivot table, if I create another pivot table, and then it goes to another sheet, I want to do what we call slicer right now, okay? So in, in if you come to insert, you can get a slicer. This is slicer and this is timeline, but let me take this one first. So it means you want to be able to look at the data based upon different other metrics. So I'm going to say, let's get a slicer for this guy. And then let's get a slicer for if it is mobile or not. Uh, no, let me leave this one. I, should I get for country? Yes, I can get for country as well. And then for operating system. So if I say, okay, it's going to give me different slicers. Now let me copy all of these things. I'm going to rename this thing so that I know where it is. So if I drop all of that here, yeah. So if I drop all of that here, I'm going to now do some cleaning with regards to the area I'm using. And then country as well. So now you can see I'm putting these things together manually, but you can click on all of them with the control button. So if you click on all of them with the control button like this, and then you can align everything the way you want it to be, okay? So if you click on all of them, you can go and align everything to make it straight and everything intact. But I won't just go through that right now. So when you have this, the whole idea from this particular stuff is that Whenever you want to see only Afghanistan, you click on Afghanistan and then everything will filter accordingly. So how do I do that? You come here, if you right click, you see where we have report connections. So that report connection is what you are going to be using to be able to get that. So let's, let me show you something. If I say Afghanistan, it didn't really change all of this. But let me go and report connection. So if I report connection right now, and then I say, I want this to be able to change this, for example, and to change this, for example, and then I say, okay. Now, if I say Afghanistan, so you notice how everything changes. So you are able to know what exactly is happening there. So this is what we call an interactive dashboard. So now because of what we're doing now, as we say, we're looking at different locations. We want to see what is happening, say, maybe United Kingdom now. If I scroll to United Kingdom, oh, let me go to Nigeria, and then I say Nigeria data, so you can see what is happening in Nigeria. So now the usage in this app right now, the number of visits was very low, but at this point in time, there must be something about this data that really made it very attractive to people in Nigeria about this time. Okay? So Nigeria also has a peak here. Whereas for all of the data set, the peak was only in November. But you can see if you look at in Nigeria, there's something here. So you can begin to think about this, your app, and say there could be something happening in the Nigerian side of things or wherever. These are lots of questions you can start figuring out. So let me go away from this, for example, and then it will give me everything. So that is the interactivity that we're talking about with regards to this dashboard we're trying to build right now. Okay, so one more thing again. If I come here, click on Android, you would notice that it won't really do anything. Why? Because of that connection. So if I report connections, and then I say, yes, please help me work on all of these things. And then I say, okay. 
And then I say, let's see what's happening to Android. Now you see how it's going to filter everything. It's going to filter everything. So whereas we've always seen that November is always having a peak, but that's not the case. So, because you can see when you bring in only Android, that's not what is happening. So you are able to zoom into this particular data a lot more with all of these different filters that you are going to build into it. So that's the idea of what we're trying to do. One more thing I'm going to do right now, I'm going to get in a slicer. Say you want to look at time. You just want to look at time, for example, now. So you use a slicer, okay, to be able to help you do that. Let me do something in that direction very quickly. So if I come here and then I insert again, and then I've got this, and then I go this way, and then I'm going to say insert for me this timeline, this timeline. And for the timeline, it recognizes only the date. And then I say, okay, brilliant. So let me copy this thing and bring it to my board. If I bring this to my board, then I have something like this here. Report connection. And then I want this thing to be able to basically work on all of them, I would expect. So I've got something like this. And then you want to know what is happening on a particular month or something. You see, you can go this way. And it's from 2016 up until 2017. Yeah. But I want to know what is happening only this time. Only this time. Notice how it filters everything. So say my... Balls, the stakeholder right now wants to know what is happening that summer month. He's just interested in summer 2017. So instead of asking me and say, hey, analyst, can you tell us what's happening in summer at this point in time? No, no, no. I've built this dashboard, interactive dashboard, and they can just go zoom in, click on where they want, and they can see what is happening at that specific time that they've zoomed in. So this is just July 2017. And then you can see everything nicely filtered here. So you can see what is happening at that particular month. So this is what we call an interactive dashboard. So normally we're going to be able to clean these things up. If I'm going to clean this thing up, for example, I can begin to have some things like this. So if I was doing this thing at work, I'm going to come here. I'm going to merge all of these things. And then I will say, So I've got something like this, and then I can make it very, very big and bold. So I can make it big. Uh, it's refusing to go big. Okay. So I can have something like this. Maybe it's even too much. I can just, okay, one minute. Oh, no, that's not what I want to do. Okay, so this is fine. So I might want to put in some cards here. Normally, I'm going to put in some card here, put in some card here, but I just thought because of time, I won't be able to get to that level. But let me just keep this one only to this point and merge this thing and now make it big. And then make it bold and reduce this thing to say 36 instead of that so i have something like this so this is good so there, there are some other stuff that i might want to see right now let's say we want to know what's the total number of each what's the total number of different stuffs. we can really factor that in and then let me put that very quickly put in some cards what we call card for example if i come to this my clean data again i can create for example this And then this one might just be card. So let me just make this one card for instance. So, and what I just want to see is the total number of uh, views, page views or bounces. I think bounce is good. Let's see the total number of bounce. So this is the sum of bounce that we'll have. So what I'm gonna do is this. So this one now, if I come to this dashboard, I can now have
So I've got something like this, and then I can do this as well. Um, so this is going to be equal to this value here. Going to be equal to this value here. Okay. So whatever is there is what this is also going to be. So I can make this one bold and make it a little bit big. Make this one really bold and make it really big as well. So brilliant. So you can do the same thing for different metrics. It kind of gives you the total. So the whole idea is this. When your stakeholder look at it, you can see it. So I can make the same thing and put this one for the number of eats, for the number of uh, new visitors or the total revenue. So it gives that very, very good high level view of what exactly you're doing. And to make this thing look nice, I'll come to this view and then I'll remove this formula bar. I'll remove grid lines. I'll remove adding and make this thing look very, very nice if I like. And then let me get another visual to stay somewhere, guys. Before I'll try to round up the visual, I'm going to get one more visual that I can put somewhere here, maybe. Uh, okay. Let me get at least one more visual and put somewhere there. Okay. So this visual I'm going to bring in right now, let me see the device, browse, channel grouping. Yes, I'm going to bring in channel grouping here. And then I'm going to check based upon channel grouping, the total number of visits based upon that. So I can do something like this. And then I can obviously, as I always like to do it. And then I can sort this thing from A to Z. or Z to A, sorry. And then I can get myself a particular visual out of this. So we can get a visual out of this. And this is going to be the last visual we're going to try to do tonight. So this visual now is a good one. Once again, let me just remove all of these things. And then let me call out for this one. And then remove this. So this is going to be visit right now. What am I doing, man? Okay. So this is going to be visit. Remove this total. We don't need this. And then copy this one now. And then bring it to the board. So I can have this one somewhere. Um, if I make this one smaller, maybe make this one smaller. So I can have something like this. So for formatting, I usually don't want to see all of these edges, all these borders, so we can remove the borders. Do the same thing to this one, no border. Do the same thing to this one, no border as well. So you have something like this. One thing you would notice is that when we apply these filters, it's not going to affect this one that we just brought in. Because at the time we did that, when we were doing that, um, what's it called, the connections, this one was not there. So you obviously will need to go back and look at the connection as well. So you need to look at the connection and notice that not all of them has been checked. So it is very, very important that you know that. So not all of them has been checked. You need to check all of them to make sure all of these things are function, functioning the way you want them to be. I think this is the last one we did. So if I now come here and say Nigeria, you would see what's going to happen now. I is going to be able to filter everything for us. And this one also is being filtered as well. So this is what we call an interactive dashboard that you can build to be able to know how it is performing or not. And then when you finish building these things, you can put in some more stuffs here. So if we have a lot more time to do all of this, we'll put in some more stuffs here and then put in different other uh, filters you might want so that you'll be able to slice through the data set. And then you can see how this one can give you all the information you want. 
if you want a particular period, not just one month, you can select it this way. So it gives just a particular period. And then it's going to be able to filter your data set, start from that period that you want it to start. So this is a dashboard that you now share within your organization. So this is when we say you can get in data, you can clean data, you can analyze data, and then you can be able to advise your stakeholders on what to do and not to do. You can filter based upon location. You can filter based upon different operating system. Now, if I want to change all of these things, if you come here, if I right click and say slicer setting, so you can change it to the way you want the header to look. So you can just change this thing to country. So there are lots of formatting we can do, but um, time will not permit us to do all of that. So you can see, and now it looks better now. The same thing happens here. So if I come here and then I'm just going to say operating system. Yes, Anis Reis, please go for it. Yes, yeah, somebody raised and to ask a question. Please ask your question. Okay, so when you change it, you can see how everything changes. So I can see what is happening with Android. Let's see what's happening with, um, what's it called, this Apple product. So iOS, let's just see iOS. So you can obviously see what's happening with iOS as well. So this is the beauty of having what we call an interactive dashboard. I don't know how many people are still using Nokia. Let's see what's happening in, yeah, what do you expect? So how many people are still using Nokia? So this kind of makes sense. This kind of makes sense because how many people do you expect are still using Nokia as their own operating system? So this is very, very good for management to see. And if we're spending money to be doing some of all those stuff that are compatible with maybe Nokia phones that people don't really use, we might as well decide to save ourselves that money and the stress of doing those things. So that gives us a very good overview of what, visualization is, dashboarding is, interactive dashboard is. So this is just a very, very quick session that we've been able to run through tonight. I'm going to let the floor open for different questions right now. So you might have questions. So let me hear your question right now, having looked at this whole analysis from the very, very big data set that we're talking about. Questions, guys. Hello, any question for me? Yes, Sam Junior, do you have a question? I think your hand is raised. Okay, uh, the hand is raised, but it's not asking any question. Okay, any question from any other person, please? So what I want you to take home from today's session is you might not be chasing any job, you might actually have your own organization that you run. You have your own website. You should go back and ensure that you have Google Analytics connected to your website. And when you're able to do that, you'll be able to get valuable insight from the information at the back end, from the information at the back end to you to be able to influence the way you operate, the way you do stuff. And at Intel and Navis Careers, so what we do here at Intel and Navis is that what we do at Intel and Navis is we're able to support you through the entire process. We train people on detail of all of these things. So what you can see right now is what we do here is people train with us to learn in full details about everything that I've talked about right now from Microsoft Excel, from the different cells, the different columns as well, to learn what is a reference cell and do all of the different functions. And then we're going to build in interactive dashboards. And then we do Power BI as well, Power uh, Data Modeling, look at semantic models. And from that, we do DAX as well. Then we move to SQL, Structured Query Language. And from there, we go to Python as well. We do different analysis using Python. Apart from the data analysis, business intelligence, or performance analysis I've been talking about, we also have lots of stuff that we do in business analysis. Tomorrow, we're going to have another trainer 
TikTok tomorrow, and he will be looking more on Python and maybe SQL. So he's going to be doing a demo with Python tomorrow. And on Friday, we'll have another person that will also be talking to us on business analysis. So I really want you not just to connect only today, find time to connect for the other days as well. And then if you think this is something that will give you value, if you think this is something that will give you value, either for your job search or or you're looking at it with regards to your own business that you're running just now, you think there's some value in it, then you can give us a call and then we can discuss a lot more. What you see on your screen, on your screen right now is a quick run through of what we train on. So in that first week, we have eight weeks structured training program. And then we have another 12 weeks for practical work experience. We start with introduction to data analysis, Microsoft Excel fundamentals, and then we talk about digital transformation where we're looking at agile methodology. Then what we've done today, we're gonna to spend four hours doing it. So do not worry about the speed with which today's session has been. We're gonna spend four hours on this, the second weekend in August. So where everybody will have the data set and you'll be able to follow it step by step by step where we're doing data visualization and storytelling with Excel. And then we'll also do introduction to business analysis. And then we'll go through Power BI. So Power BI, I won't have time to look at Power BI jobs. Today, I just looked at performance analyst job because I'm interested in people that want to get COS and to let you know that you can get COS as a data analyst. So that's my main objective for tonight. And I believe I've been able to pass that across. And then we do data modeling, we do DAX as well. In our business analysis training, we do a lot with stakeholder management and requirement gathering. Then we do SQL, and it is a very, very detailed and structured program. If you are interested, get across the roles, you'll be able to benefit from this two months intensive training. And then the three months period is going to be to have projects that you work on. Some guys that are on the platform just now, they've got lots of projects that they are busy working on. And every Thursday, we are together to give them feedback based upon what they've been working on. So guys, I'm going to throw the floor open for questions. If you want more information, you can call us on the phone number here. And this is a mistake. You can see the phone number is the same, but we have two lines actually. So but you can give us a ring on this, or you can go to our website. You'll see lots of information on our website. And then we appreciate if you can follow us on our social media platforms. So we've got our Facebook page here. There's lots of short videos that are on the Facebook page. So this will be of very, very good value, as you can see. And then we also have our YouTube channel. In our YouTube channel, we have different trainings that are there as well. So if I go and open the YouTube channel right now, we've got lots of videos here that are also good. We've got the playlist. So all our trainings, all of our trainings, they go on here. So you can come back. When we do trainings, we upload everything here and all of the people that join our platform, you have the opportunity to go and rewatch these things, follow it step by step, slowly, and practice this thing in your own time. This YouTube channel is not open to everybody. As you can see, it is private. It is only those that join the full program. Here you have, this is 18 different videos. So you can see lots of videos on different topics that we discuss. This is when we're discussing Python as well. So we do lots of Python here. And then at some other time, we're looking at CV. And we're looking at, yeah, we're discussing about how to write our CVs and how to prepare for different jobs. And here we're discussing on Either you're working full-time or you're working in contract. So all of these are the different stuff that we do on the platform. So if you're interested, it's a very good opportunity right now that there are lots of jobs based upon what I've shown to you guys. And I'm going to drop this on the link so that you can find time to look at all these different jobs. I'll drop it on the chat right now. So look at all of these different jobs. Whether you are in the UK or you are not in the UK, there's opportunity for everybody because... These organizations are able to give sponsorship for the right candidate. And somebody is asking, will the recording be shared? Yes, the recording for today's session is going to be free for all on face on YouTube. And it's going live anyway on Facebook. And it's going to be on YouTube as well. So we can obviously rewatch this thing at our own time. But if you want detailed training in all of these things, 
we can always discuss that and you join the platform there are lots of opportunities right now and you don't even need to have a degree in computing or whatever to be able to do these things okay my degree is not in computing my first degree is in geology my master's is in petroleum engineering and my doctorate is in engineering as well but when you've got flair for numbers and you are able to upskill yourself in this thing, you clearly can do this thing. And it's going to solve lots of problems. You get a job that you're satisfied with. You get a job that there's clear progression for you. You get a job that you can advance. You just need to put in the work. And then again, you see, you could be working remotely. So you don't necessarily have to be in the office at all time. You can work remotely. You can work on hybrid basis. So... I only wanted to look at NHS jobs today, but if I go to other sites, you will see lots of jobs for data analysis or performance analysis. So right now we're just looking at data analysis and you can see the number of opportunities that are there. So there's lots of jobs right now for people to grab. You're in Nigeria, you're considering traveling to the UK. There's lots of jobs. You're in Ghana or wherever, just upskill yourself and apply for these roles NHS usually sponsor people, so there's lots of job for people to get right now if you're ready to upskill yourself in the right skill. I did say we're going to have a section on business analysis on Friday. So this business analyst role as well. So you're working remotely or hybrid, and this offers 42000 and this offers 53000 per annum. There's opportunity right now. So that's a message. So I want you guys to know that there are opportunities. Don't let these opportunities slide. Try to harness, try to upskill yourself and go and get opportunities out there that are open to you. So let me get questions right now from anybody. If you got questions for me, please, can you please ask your questions? No question from anybody for me? Okay, if there's no question, I want to be able to gauge the section tonight. So can anybody unmute yourself and tell me how you find the section? Have you got some value from the conversation? Have you seen some things that you can action outside this meeting? And is it quite informative for you? So anybody want to please, please try to give us a very, very quick feedback from the session. We are 10 minutes past the time that we allocated for today's meeting. But I just want to be able to gauge how the section has gone for everybody, please. Yes, please. Anybody want to go for me, please? Before I close the meeting, I want to hear somebody else speak. I've been speaking for like 90 minutes. Can I get somebody else say anything? Hello? Uh, I don't understand why my class is nobody saying anything. Okay. Thank you very much. It was very, very informative and I've learned a lot from it and I will put this in practice and hopefully my manager will be very happy with the, the way you have shown me the new dashboards, how to do the dashboards. Thank you once again very, very much. Thank you very much. I really appreciate that feedback. I really appreciate that feedback. And if you have any question or any support, we are very here to talk through on how to implement these things on the job. Good. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Any other person, if you have any question for me, I'm very much here to respond to any question. But if there's no question, we can draw the meeting to a close. Thank you very much for your time. But let's be together again tomorrow at 7 o'clock for another session. And tomorrow we'll be looking at Python. I did show you a bit of Python today when I was processing the data. But tomorrow we'll be having a demo session with a different person that will be talking about Python tomorrow. So please... We have closed for tonight. I'm going to stop the recording, guys, and I'll stop streaming on Facebook. But I'm still going to hang on here for like some few minutes. For any person that wants to chat, I'm still going to be here for some chat. But thanks a lot. I really appreciate your time. Bye for now.